Hi guys, so in this lecture video, we will be discussing the displacement or the single replacement reaction. So we will learn how to recognize this types of reaction right here, as well as predicting the products of this reaction in case that there is a reaction. So first, let's go over and to learn how to recognize these types of reaction. So what is a single replacement reaction? A single replacement reaction, as it name imply, this is the types of reaction where we have one element that replacing another element in a compound. And here is a diagram of this reaction right here. So let's say that we have the first reactant, and the first reactant is an element, and now we have the element A. Element A, when we add the compound BX to it, reacting with a compound BX. And in the course of this reaction right here, A will then come in to replace the element B. So A is replacing B. And now A will be binding compound or forming a compound with X. So therefore, the first product being produced will then be this product AX right here. And now that B has been replaced already, it will now become an element. So that's what happened right here. A, an element, is replacing B. So now B will become an element, and A is forming compound with X. So that's the course of this single replacement reaction right here. And so let's now go over this reaction right here in a little bit more detail. So in terms of what is replacing what. If A happened to be a metal, it will then replace the metal or the hydrogen in the compound BX. Versus if A is a non-metal, it will then replace a non-metal in the compound BX. So that's how we know what is replacing what. So that way we can write the corresponding products. Okay. And now, there are two important considerations that we need to consider in this type of reaction. And the first one is, will there be a reaction? That's because we take an, a, an element and we react it with a compound. It doesn't always guarantee that there is a reaction, right? Because a lot of time we can be mixing two things together and there's nothing happening at all. Okay, so will there be a reaction? In order to answer that question right here, then what happened is that the single replacement reaction are then driven by the reactivity of the element A and the element B. So that is the factor that determines whether there will be a reaction or not. If a more in which that we have that a more reactive element will be able to replace the less reactive elements, and these are the elements A and B that we are referring to. If A is more reactive than B, then the reaction would occur because A will be able to replace B and now producing this product over here. Versus if A is less reactive than B, then now there will be no reaction. So that's what happened right there. Okay, That's how we determine whether there is a reaction or not by looking at the reactivity of the element A and the element B. So now, how do we know between element A and element B, which one is more reactive? Then here's what happened right here. We have established something that we call the activity series. The activity series is basically an experimental observation in the, regarding the study of different elements to see which one is more reactive than other. And this is the activity series right here, where we have the different elements being listed in here, in one straight line. And now on this left side right here, it means that this element on the left side are more reactive. And the element on the right side here will then be less reactive. So that's how all of the elements are ranked in terms of their reactivity. So again, element on the left side of this activity series are more reactive and therefore will be able to replace an element that is on the right side. And the greater the differences between two elements on this activity series, then the more vigorous the reaction would be. For an example, lithium and gold were of 
they are on two extreme ends of this activity series, meaning lithium is much, much more reactive than gold. So therefore, lithium will be able to come in and replace gold immediately, and it will be a very, very fast reaction. So if versus if we were to have chromium and iron, they're close together on the activity. So therefore, the chromium will be able to replace iron. But then because they close on the activity series, this reaction right here would not be a very fast reaction. Okay, so again, the further they are on the activity series, then the faster or the more vigorous the reaction will be. Let's now try a few examples to make sure that we can use this activity series right here to predict whether there is a reaction or not. So let's now try the first example. Copper, solid, copper elements reacting with a solution of silver nitrate. So this is an element and this is a compound right here. Will there be a reaction when we mix these two things together? So here in this case right here, let's see where copper and silver will be on the activity series. There will only be a reaction if copper is more reactive than silver. So please keep that in mind. There will be a reaction if copper is more reactive than silver. And now let's see where they are. So let's erase this to make sure we can identify them. So copper is right here and silver is right here. So in this case right here, we would then see that copper is more reactive than silver. So therefore we'll be able to come in and replace this silver right here. So therefore, based on that, we know that yes, there will be a reaction. Okay. Now, how fast would this reaction be? Then the answer, okay, well, they are close on the activity series, but not too close. So it will happen, but except it's not an extremely fast reaction. Okay, but there will be a reaction. And now let's try another example, reaction two. When we take calcium solid reacting with HCl, will there be a reaction? Uh, so again, if anything going to happen, the calcium will then come in and replace the hydrogen, right? So we have a metal, replacing either a metal or a hydrogen. And HCl or acid have hydrogen in them that can be replaced. So that's the hydrogen. So here in this case right here, we need to compare the reactivity of calcium and hydrogen. Calcium is right here, and hydrogen is right here. So suddenly we can see the calcium is much, much more reactive than the hydrogen. So therefore there'll be a very, very, very quick reaction. So a very fast reaction here in this case. Okay, so that's how we de determine whether there is a reaction or not. Now your turn, let's please try the example three and four before we go over the answer together. So here in this case, assume you have tried this already, let's now go over this one together. So on the third reaction, copper element reacting with zinc nitrate. If anything going to happen, it be the copper that replacing the zinc, right? So metal replacing metal. So where's copper on the activity series? So copper is right here and zinc is over here. So we see here in this case right here that copper is less reactive than zinc. So therefore it will not be able to replace zinc. Thus, no reaction. Okay. And now let's try another example. Aluminum reacting with a compound magnesium sulfate. So if, if anything going to happen, it be a metal replacing a metal, right? So can aluminum replace magnesium? So again, let's look at the activity series. So here in this case right here, the aluminum is right here and the magnesium is right here. So here in this case, magnesium is actually more reactive, right? So aluminum is less reactive. And therefore, aluminum will not be able to replace magnesium. Because again, in, if anything going to happen, aluminum will be replacing magnesium. But aluminum cannot replace magnesium. So therefore, no reaction. So that's how easy it is to determine whether there is a reaction or not. We'll be referring to this activity series. And most general organic chemistry courses would actually would give you the activity series. So this is given to us. And in our class, you'll be given the same thing. So it's important that you know how to use this activity series. 
but it will be given to you on quizzes and exam. So that the first consideration right there, it is a chemical reaction. Let's now assume we have determined that there is a chemical reaction. Now there'll be product that being produced. How do we now write the correct formula of the products? And the product B, element B, and the compound AY. How do we write the products? So here is how we will be writing the product right here. And again, B, once if there, if there is a reaction, B will get replaced. And once, once B is replaced already, it will then become an element. Okay. So here's what happened right here. If B happened to be a metal, and now this metal would now become an element. Metal elements are basically solid and they are neutral. So therefore, when we write the chemical formula, let's say we have copper, then this copper right here would then be a solid and is neutral in its charge. So that's how, how we would write, then write the formula if B is a metal. Similarly, let's say B is a silver, where we have formed silver element. Again, all metals in the elemental form, they are solid and they charge equal to zero. So this is how we will be writing the formula of the silver element. Okay. Versus if B is now not a metal, but it is a non-metal, then the non-metal within that exists as an element. They are the diatomic elements and they are gases. So for an example, H2, if the hydrogen is being replaced, it will now become an element and now be form, become H2 gas. So that's how we would write a chemical formula. Okay, so it would be diatomic element. Because that is the elemental form of non-metal. Okay. And let's now go over writing the formula of the product AX. So AX would be a compound. And here in this case right here, the formula of this product AX right here is then based on the charges of A and X to make a neutral ionic compound. So that's how we'll be writing them. So quite easy to do. So here in this case, let's say the char on A is plus 2 and X is negative 2. Then the form of this product right here will then be A3X2 to now produce a neutral ionic compound. And this is very similar to writing formula of ionic compound that we have learned before already. So that's quite easy. Okay. Now let's try now a few of this example right here. Predict if there is a reaction. And if there is, then write the form of the products and then balance the chemical equation. So first one, copper reacting with a solution of sulfitic acid. So here in this case right here, we have copper, which is a metal. And here's sulfitic acid, we have hydrogen. So if anything going to happen, it would be copper that would be replacing hydrogen. So again, that's the question we want to ask ourselves right now. Between copper and hydrogen, which one is more reactive? Can copper replace hydrogen? And if we were to now refer back to the activity series over here. So copper is right here and hydrogen right here. So we can see that copper cannot replace hydrogen. So here in this case right here, going back to this one, there'll be no reaction. So if we were going to take a piece of uh, solid copper and drop that into a sol solution of sulfitic acid, there will be no reaction. Okay. And now reaction number two, a piece of lead they drop into or combine with a solution of copper to nitrate. What's going to happen? So here in this case right here, if anything going to happen, we will have a metal replacing another metal, right? And in, in this case, copper is the metal. So can lead replace copper? And again, let's now go back to the activity series and compare lead and copper. So copper is right here and lead's right here. So we see lead is more reactive than copper. So lead will be able to replace copper. Okay, so in this case right here, lead will be able to re replace copper. So yes, there will be a reaction. And now let's draw the form of the product. So if lead is coming in to replace copper, copper would now become an element. 
and make it copper is a metal. It will then become copper solid and the charge equal to zero. So that's how we write the formula of the first product. And now lead will be forming compound with the nitrate. Okay, so when lead forming compound with nitrate, what would be the formula of the product? So if we were to write this formula of the product right here, we see the lead is actually one of the transient metal, right? And here in this case right here, a char can be plus two or can also be plus four. It have various charges to it. Anytime we have the product of various charges, we will assume they form the plus two. Well, we actually don't assume, but we would be writing the products for the plus two. And so we will do that for all of the trans transient metal that in which the plus two is one of the oxidation state for it. Then we will be writing the product for the plus two. So that way, it will be easier for us to write the balance equation and compare answer with each other. Okay. So again, we just go ahead and write the product for the plus two. But at the same time, we recognize that the products with the plus three, plus four, plus one can also be formed as well. But then we don't want to be making it complicated to write balance equation. So therefore, again, if we have a transient metal, then we've a, and if it plus two is a possible oxidation state for it, then we will be writing the product for the plus two. So here in this case right here, it would be PB and that is plus two. And now the nitrate negative two or negative one. So therefore, there'd be two nitrate for any one lab. And then that will then be the form of product. And now with them apply the solubility in, we see that let nit two nitrate is soluble in water, so therefore it is an aqueous. Okay, but whether it is aqueous or solid does not matter at all because we would not be looking at the solubility to determine whether there is a reaction or not. And this is something very important that you need to remember. In the double replacement reaction, we look at the driving forces. In the activities, uh, in the single replacement reaction, we use the activity series. Okay, we do not focus on the solubility or the physical states of the products in the single replacement reaction. And next one, left reacting with a solution of sulfitic acid. What would be the products? So here in this case right here, then we would then see that lead is a metal. If anything go ha going to happen, it will then come in to replace hydrogen, right? So it can lead replace hydrogen. So again, let's look at the activity between lead and hydrogen. Here is lead and hydrogen right here. So lead is a little bit more reactive than hydrogen. So therefore, it will be able to come in and replace hydrogen. So here in this case, yes, there will be a reaction. How fast is this reaction right here? Then the answer? it will not be a very fast reaction. So hydrogen been replaced already. So hydrogen will now become an element. And as an element, the chemical form of hydrogen is H2, and it is a gas. Now we not write in H2 because there's two hydrogen in here. We Again, we write H2 because as an element, hydrogen exists as H2, okay? Even if we have one hydrogen in here, the formula of the product here would still be H2. So please remember that. And now the other product would then be lead would be forming compound with sulfate. And now let's write the product for the plus two. So in this case right here, PbSO4. And now this is actually insoluble in water. So it is a solid. But again, that's not the reason why that there is a reaction here in this case. Okay. So that, there we go. That will be the product of this reaction. And now let's try a few one, a few more ones. So let's try five. Uh, zinc reacting with a solution of magnesium sulfate. Will there be a reaction? So in this case right here, zinc and magnesium. So zinc E right here and magnesium right here. So magnesium is more reactive than zinc, right? So therefore, zinc will not be able to replace magnesium. So in this case, no reaction. Okay. Please try the other example. 